worship. It's a word that we often hear in our circles of faith. But are we sure that what we do on a weekly basis, especially when we attend our services, is actually being considered and accepted by the Father as worship? Well, I think some of us will probably be shocked when we find out what we've always believed worship to be may not be exactly how Scripture defines it. So what we're going to do today is we're going to dig into the Word and we're going to see what Scripture has to say about worship. Stay Stay tuned. We just want to thank y'all for coming and tuning in to Word Made Fresh. We're here. We're just everyday believers who come together to sharpen each other with the word. I am your co-host, Dion. I'm your co-host, Solomon. And we want to say thank you for those who've already subscribed for being a part of this community and endeavor. If you're new, please consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell as well. Let's jump right into it. So say I come before the Father and you know, I sing a song unto him. Does that necessarily mean that I'm worshiping him? No. If I come before him and I sing a song, does it necessarily mean that I'm not worshiping him? No. <laughs> right. So the fact of the matter is, and it does, if it doesn't really constitute the, exactly the act that I'm doing, it must have something to do with my heart. Yeah. I don't agree. It must have had something to do with the way I view the Father. Right. So if I can, I can come before him and I can do the exact same work, but if I have a different disposition, a different heart towards him, that in itself can determine whether or not that action action will be received unto him as worship or not. Just as anything else, you just can't do it like you want to do it. You got to go to the scriptures and see what the scriptures say about it. In uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 23, listen to what it says. It says, uh, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. And when I read that passage, that lets me know if he's seeking for true worshipers, then number one, true worshipers is probably a rarity for the Mm. fact he got to seek for them. And then number two, if there's true worshipers, then there's also false ones. Mm. And so we certainly have to go to the scriptures and see what the scriptures say, what worship is, to make sure that we're lining up with one of those true worshipers that he's been seeking. You know, when we talk about worship as a whole, there are certainly different acts that can constitute, you know, part of worship. Mm-hmm. And I think the first one that we want to look at today is, you know, the act of thanksgiving Absolutely. when it comes to, you know, playing a part in worship. When I think of uh, being thankful, you know, showing thanksgiving, you know, different passages come to mind, like different scriptures. Um, one in particular, when I was thinking of Psalms 100, uh, when you read it with me, it says, Make a joyful noise unto your Ua, all ye lands. Serve your Ua with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that your Ua, he is Elohim. It is he that hath made us, not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For your Ua is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endure to all generations. He is the source of everything good. You know, when I come before him, you know, that should be my attitude. I even think about, you know, a lot of times in fellowships, people come into the fellowships and, you know, they got their head down, and, you know, they feel sad. And I'm like, you know, it's, it's only, um, it's only a, a chance or reason to be grateful. You realize we ain't got no control over anything. Mm, that is taking place before he gets to the sanctuary. Mm. And I think about that, you know, when I walk into the sanctuary, when I walk into the assembly and we, you know, we have services, how, how much of a transformation, you know, the services would be if people walked into the sanctuary with a song in their heart already, mm. with Thanksgiving already. It would completely, you know, just transform. Having to get worked up. Having, yeah. Exactly, having to get worked up. You know, that's, that's not what he said. You got to come in like that. And the way you come in like that is that you already been doing that all week. Mm. You know, so that's one of the keys. You know, you just, you don't turn that switch on. Whenever you you know, attend, you do that all week. That's right. And it makes it that much easier and natural for you to continue that when you walk into the sanctuary. You know? We ain't make nothing. We ain't make ourselves. Right. Right. He made us. You know, right. it's him, it's him, it's him. We belong to him. It's his pasture that we've been being allowed to graze in. Right. You know, all these things. So whenever I come in his presence, I shouldn't have, you know, a downcast um, you know, soul with my head down. And, you know what I'm saying? But realize, you know, you know thank you, Father. Thank you. Even when things don't work out the way that I want to work out, I'm just okay. Yeah. I mean, it's life, life can be stressful sometimes. I mean, we're not 
dismissing um, the realities of life, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, it, that, it, your, your focus has to really shift. And it's, it can be difficult, it can be a battle, but at the end of the day, your focus has to shift. I think that the telltale sign of that dude is how, you, how are you when you're alone? Yeah. Towards him, your attitude towards him. Yeah. Does it only get cut on when you come in a, in a group or in a room with some other people? Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, thank, you know, hallelujah, thank you, Father, mm-hmm. thank you, Jesus. You know how people can get. Yeah. But you know, are you are you like that when you're in your own time when you're alone? Do you really? And if you if you are, then okay, I, I can I can accept that. Right. But if it's just something that you don't never do, and then all of a sudden you get into the fellowship or the sanctuary, and now you you're screaming and yelling and hollering, and then you know, I mean. Is that really true? Is that really genuine? Are you really thankful in your heart? Is that really your disposition? Mm -hmm. Psalm 92, 1 is a passage of scripture. You know, the whole passage is really, when you look at the context of it, it's kind of, it's like a a spiritual war going on um, or just a war period. And the very first verse, it says, it is a good thing to give thanks unto Yahuwah and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. There's a battle scene going on here. And one of the reasons that it's, it's such a good thing to give thanks into your ua is because it's really good for you. It's not as much good for him as it is good for you because it does something internally to you when you give thanks. The spirit agrees with that spirit that you're you know, exhibiting and it really just it, it sets your emotions in order and yeah. helps you to realize, listen, I really don't have a lot to be grumbling and complaining about because at the end of the day, one, I got victory. I'm on the winning side, you know what I'm saying? And so because of that, whatever's going down right now, as long as I trust in him and follow his path, I have to be, I can be thankful for that. That's, that's deep, man. That's real deep. I mean, if you just ask yourself, you know, can you overly thank the Father? Of course not. You know what I mean? I think, I, I think if we really just kind of took the time and say, you know, I'm going to give him thanks for everything that I've realized that he's doing on a day-to-day basis and I you know, I think by doing so like you said it will do something in your it heart does, you yeah. know what I mean? it will make you you know have a different attitude you know towards how, how you are towards things and even being content mm-hmm. you know be- being thankful it really has a lot to do with my recognition of um, of Elohim as God as the source Um, When you read Romans chapter 1 verse 21, the Bible says this. It says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. And then the Bible says, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. They're saying the reason they weren't thankful is because they weren't acknowledging him Mm -hmm. as the source of everything, particularly creation, you know. They weren't acknowledging that, you know, he made all this and he's the one that's providing all this. And when you don't acknowledge him as the source then you won't be thankful because you think you know you got it on your own yeah. you worked hard i talked i remember i talked to a guy in the store and he was like no i gave me this what i worked hard for this i got three houses four houses i worked hard for it. like bro you don't understand that's something can be snatched from you immediately you know it's not like the guy in james so i'm gonna you know, do this and do that you know you know if if you will you will do that stuff. right you know right, what i'm saying exactly when i have the perspective that you know, without him, I can do nothing. Without him, I have nothing. It's his very breath in my lungs that I breathe. Mm-hmm. You know, I have to be thankful. You know, for everything that that I'm that I have. You know, that's true. And it makes me think about how often do we say, you know, yeah, the Father did this for me. You know, Yah did this for me and provided mm-hmm. for me. But secretly in our heart, we still feel like, you know, I I got a major role in this. Yeah. You know, it's not, it, it, I still had to do this. And of course, we we gotta we gotta obey, we gotta step out, and we gotta move forward in faith. But at the end of the day, it's him. Right. Hey, quick stop here. Please tell us in the comments what it is that you are thankful for. We yes. love to hear. Please share it. Uh, when I think about the verse in uh, one Thessalonians five eighteen, it says, "In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of Yahuwah and Messiah Yahusha concerning you." So. He clearly states from the very beginning, he says, in everything. It, it didn't say some things or the things that, that kind of mean the most to you, mm-hmm. but it says in everything. Mm-hmm. So that means there's not one thing that can be touched upon as far as what's taking place in my life that I shouldn't be thankful for. Yeah. You know, and also it says this is his will. So we can always try to figure out, you know, what's the will of the Father for my life? What does he want me to do? Well, he clearly tells us right here that being thankful and giving thanks always is one of the wills that he has for our life. Yeah.
what is one of the very first things you teach your children when it comes to mannerism? Mm. You teach them how to say, say thank you. Thank you. You yeah. know why? Because naturally, someone we just don't know how to do that. Mm. You know, as children of the Most High, it sometimes can be the same way. We just don't, you don't naturally think about that and know how to do that. And so sometimes we just have to be taught how to say thank you. Right. Sometimes He had to teach us by taking away things. Mm. But at the end of the day, uh, sometimes we have to be taught how to say thank you. Ultimately, you know, at the end of it all, the Bible makes it very clear in Philippians chapter 2, verse 14, where it says, do all things without murmurings and disputings. And, you know, even I, I have to keep that scripture on the forefront of my mind day in and day out, because if not, you can easily slip up and just be complaining. And the Bible says, it says murmurings and disputings. That's like complaining under your breath, even just complaining to yourself, mumbling and grumbling. And like I said, if you're not careful, you know, that, that happens every day. Something doesn't go your way. You know, <laughs> and uh, but it said do all things because again, when you understand that he is the source of absolutely everything, when you complain with the lot that he's provided for you, what you're saying is, you know, hey God, this ain't good enough. Mm. You could have done better, and we all know he can't do no better for you because he always, always does his best. You know, yeah. Just think about it. If we just really be honest with ourselves, you know, how many times do we complain about things on a day to day basis? Yeah. You know, we, we wish they were a certain way and we don't get what we want concerning them and all of a sudden we complain. But I think a lot of times we don't really stop to really think about, you know, if it's, if it's something that I wanted to transpire and didn't transpire the way that I wanted to, you know, who's really the one that's over it all? Yeah. You know, who, who allowed it not to transpire? So that's what we say when you, when you complain, when you're ungrateful, when you're unthankful, you know, it all ends up going back on them. Yeah. Hey, believers, that is it. Once again, we want to say thank you, no pun intended, for taking your time out once again to check in here at Word Made Fresh. Don't forget to smash that like button if you found absolutely any value at all. And if you're thankful yeah. uh, as well, and if you're new, please consider subscribing. Hey, listen, we want to say thank you to each and every one yes. of you who have subscribed as well. Uh, we definitely appreciate it. Keep sharing the content as well. And until next time, please remember to learn the word. Make sure you live in the word and share the word. Shalom. Word. Hold up. We forgot something. Oh, babe. We definitely will be remiss if we don't stop and give thanks. And I'm so thankful that, you know, God loves me so much that he sent his son, Yahusha, and I have salvation. I'm so thankful for him. I'm thankful for my wife and her support through this whole process. You know, she's a trooper. She's a fighter. I'm thankful for her i'm thankful for my kids i'm thankful for the lot that he's given me and i'm thankful for you brother you know we come together Appreciate on this thing right it. here and, and this, it's been a journey and so i'm definitely thankful to the father for, for you as well and i think equally you know i would be you know really a, a, a sh short if i would not thank my wife and my kids you know my wife she always comes and encourage me every friday when they come out we kind of sit down and we watch them together mm -hmm. this is a great encouragement you know that's something i really appreciate in my life and for my two girls they always say daddy you know when the video is coming out when the video is coming out so that's something that you know it, it provides a great excitement to me you know so mm -hmm. we thankful that the father brought us together that he gave us this this concept he gave us this idea and you know slowly but surely we, we moving forward mm -hmm. and um i would lastly i want to say thank you to you guys to our viewers you know to all those who support us, you know, in whatever way, you know, whether, you know, you're, you're liking, you're subscribing, you know, you're coming up every um, week and you're letting us know how you feel about the content or you're going to the website, you know, supporting us in that way. All those things make a huge difference. So we just want to say we're thankful for you. We love you. And we just appreciate everything that the Father is doing.